When was the last time you were asked a question you haven't been asked in a Q&A session? In the last show I was asked, somebody said, what three words would you say to a flat earther? And I thought, that's a strange question. And, it's and a I great said, question. And I said, well, I don't need three words, I only need two. But two? This, is, this, is a, this is a family... Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, Tim, we have... It's never been more exciting, has it? The, the whole space industry, I don't think... is. Well, no, I suppose back in the 60s, it was pretty darn exciting. Yeah, it, it was really exciting yeah. there, of course. And I think we're approaching that kind of level of, of that excitement and innovation. We've got, yeah. you know, two big companies, SpaceX and Blue Origin, have just launched in the last week, you know, massive rockets. These things are the, nearly the... Well, the SpaceX is the size of a Saturn V, and Blue Origin's new Glenn is bigger than the Statue of Liberty. So these are kind of going-to-the-moon type uh, scale of rockets. Yeah. Um, and it's... I I mean, it's incredibly exciting to see. It is breaking boundaries, new technologies, which will have massive spin-offs into all sorts of other areas and bringing down the cost of access to space. So we can now do more in space, things that we didn't think we'd be able to do for maybe 50, 100 years, things yeah. like solar power coming from space um, because they brought the cost of getting up there down. Getting up there down. <laughs> <laughs> if you know what I mean. Yeah, getting down while you're up yeah. there, man, which is what you did. Somebody described the other day, they were saying, so there was somebody was having a little bit of a pushback going, you know, what's all this big deal? So, so about reusable rockets, they cost so much money anyway. And somebody simply said, look, can you imagine the, the, the cost of flying somewhere if every time you landed, they threw the plane you landed in off a cliff after you'd all disembarked? Absolutely. Because that's where we are, isn't that's it? That's effectively what we, what we did with the Apollo era. Um, I mean, the spacecraft itself came back. That was 1% of the entire rocket. And then that went to a museum. It never flew again. Yeah. So to put it into a comparison, on the space shuttle, if you wanted to fly one kilogram into orbit, it cost about $53,000. We can do that now for about $1,200 on a SpaceX. $1,200? $1, wow. And that's expected to come down to the region of maybe two to $500. How are you with the population of space... Well, do you think yeah, that's, so, uh, do you think I mean, it, it's a it's a busy place. Uh, we we know the number of satellites that are going up is is increasing exponentially. But to put in comparison, we've still got fewer satellites in space than there are aircraft right now flying in our skies. Right, and space is space a, a is a big place. But we do need to be careful about it, and we do need to regulate how much goes up. And there, what do you how think about the human po populating of of space and beyond? Well, I think that's inevitable. I mean, we are now talking fifty hundred, you know, two hundred years in, into the future. I think in terms of of uh, large numbers of the population going off to colonise the moon or to Mars. But I think that is an inevitability of, of our nature, our desire to explore. Do you just go further and further and further? Yeah, I mean, going beyond Mars, now that's really challenging. Right. Mars is achievable with today's technology, but to Jupiter, that's going to be really difficult.